Bury Me, another song uh, that had been around before. So here we are on the fourth song in the record, and really only one of the first four songs on the record is new. Again, real indications of how difficult it was for me to write and how I felt paralyzed by the opportunity. Knowing we we're going to be uh, get this big record contract, our dream is realized. We finally are, have a legitimate label. We're going to be on the same label as uh, you know Mud Honey and Hole and you know you know other great artists. Uh, instead of jumping to the responsibility, I think I recoiled at it, which is why I think you don't see a lot of original material in this regard. Um, Bury Me is one of those songs that um, through the years I've kind of gone back and forth on. At the time I liked it, then I grew not to like it. Um, and uh, I think I, I think I'd always considered it a little bit of a subpar thing. Uh, it's a bit of a hodgepodge as far as the song goes. Uh, it was it was a struggle for us to come up with because um, the riff, the do 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 do, which starts the song and is the main part of the song, uh, that was pretty easy to write. It was what followed. Um, it was James who came up with the um, the melody um, on the. Uh, when it do, 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 when it does the change, James came up with that melody, which is why he's singing on that, the Unchain, Unchain. Um, so yeah, so it goes through that part and it just cycles back to the riff. Um, and at the end, James actually wrote that part too, uncredited, um, the, uh, the, the the beautiful coda, the F to G thing where it sort of sails in the sunset and I, and I play a lead and, and, and sing that. So yeah, in my mind, again, going back to my struggles as a writer at the time, um, I always kind of looked a little bit down my nose at, at, at Bury Me, though I, I like playing the song live. For a while, it was, was one of our better opening, opening songs, um, like the lyric. It's kind of a cool lyric. Um, but um, but um, to me, it's like sort of a weird Frankenstein. It's like parts that don't kind of go together, but we kind of jam them together and made them work. And by kind of owning it, it kind of works. Um, that said, um, you know, it's a song we had put on, this, on the set list for the upcoming uh, Rock Invasion Tour. Two, rock, rock Invasion 2. So uh, I was looking forward to playing it again. So I must have some uh, some affection for the tune. Um, yeah, but again, not a real not a real standout song. And, you know, so here I am, you know, we're, like I said, four songs in. And I think, you know, there's the good and the bad. You see the development of what became the Pumpkins guitar style, the aggression, the power, the dynamics, the light and the shade. But it's really what we call in the band smoke and mirrors. It's a lot of dynamics covering for the fact that you don't have real good melodies and you're kind of getting by on guitar parts and craft and guile and Jimmy's power and stuff like that. And, uh, and I think that's why, uh, you know, Siamese, the record that followed was such a, which was such an incredible journey because we had to make the transition from that band to being a band that was able to, to write, you know, real songs with real melodies, but that's uh, that's for another broadcast.